Okay, traders, so now we're going to talk about part three, e-mini characteristics and specifications specifically uh, on the series. Again, here's the full series that we did on trading e-mini futures contracts. The last one was e-mini futures. What are e-mini futures contracts with the history, how they work? And now we're going to be talking about the characteristic specifications. The next one is going to be trading platforms that you can use. So uh, today, this is just what we're going to cover overall, right? The terminology, what contracts and ticks mean, uh, different contracts of the market to trade, and then the margins, which are very different than what you're accustomed to hearing about in terms of trading stocks or Forex, which most of you, I think, probably trade Forex or stocks. So whenever we consider in the futures world, when we say contract, it's like buying a share of stock or, you know, one position in Forex. So if we say we're going to put one contract in, it's like trading one lot, right? So if we're going to buy one contract of the E-mini S&P 500, we're going to buy a share of stock. That's kind of how it relates in terms of the terminology. Now, one thing to understand as well when it comes to the contracts is that they do expire. If you guys remember from the last video, I explained how it, before the contracts, you know, whether they were forward or future contracts, there was always based on a physical product. Whereas now, you know, over 50% of the futures contracts traded are, are in indices, especially the e-mini S&P 500. So there isn't anything tangible anymore, but the contract still expires because it's on the same system as the futures contracts were set on physical commodities, which quote unquote needed to be delivered. All right. So remember that depending on the contract that you trade or the market that you trade, that is going to expire. And I'm going to explain that a little bit here in a moment. So uh, generally, the indices expire every three months. The commodities expire every month. Now, in terms of the leverage, right, it was one of the advantages of trading futures is that it's much higher leverage in that we can make a lot more money with less. Every dollar that the futures market moves in is between $50 to $5,000. And I'm going to go through the majority of the most popular markets. So when we say points we mean dollars, okay? And when we say ticks, we mean cents. So if I say that the market went up a point, that means it went up a dollar, okay? And when I say went up two points, it means it, it went up two dollars, okay? And then ticks are the amount of cents in a future. So the, the structure of each actual contract is structured differently. And I'm gonna show you guys some charts here maybe in a minute where I can kind of explain to you guys the difference between a few of those. But it, the, the normal way that we think about money is that there's always 100 cents in a dollar. And not every futures contract has four cents in a dollar. I don't know why they set it up this way. You know, thinking about how it should work, it probably should be 100 cents in every dollar. But that's not the way it works. And I'll kind of go through that here in a second. So to always remember when we say if we're going to buy a contract... Right, we bought one contract, that means we're gonna buy one position or one share of stock, okay? And then if we go up a point, that means it went up a dollar. And then the value of the dollar can increase depending on the market, and then the, the ticks are our cents. So w just a quick recap, guys, if you guys didn't see the last video, the reason why they're called E-minis is because E means all electronic, the mini means one-fifth the size of the normal contract. Okay, so I wanted to just cover that. That's why they call them E-mini futures. So the, the every contract month has a specific letter or code. So the indices generally expire every third month. So that is March, June, September, and December. And when you're going to trade these uh, financial products, you're going to need to use these codes to be able to go ahead and trade with. When we get into the trading platforms, I'll go ahead and, and explain some of the differences between some of them. Some do make it a little bit easier for you and I, since most of us are either brand new to trading or we don't know. We don't want to get into all this fancy kind of code that they, that they speak to. Commodities like oil, gold, silver, palladium, platinum generally are going to be expire every month. And the reason why, if you guys if you guys can hear my little puppy screaming, somebody just came in. Sorry about that. 
generally commodities expire every month because they need to be delivered, right? So keep that in mind. But these are the codes that you're going to use to trade those. There is one platform that uses the, the, the month code, which I am going to recommend you guys use. And I'll, I'll share that in the next video, which is going to be part four of the trading platforms. So these are the different contracts or the different quote unquote markets to trade. Obviously, the most popular contract is going to be the E-mini S&P 500. This is the code for it, which is E-mini S&P, right? That's the actual code for it right there. So when we say ES, we refer to the E-mini S&P 500. So instead of 100 cents in a dollar, they're 4 cents in a dollar. Okay, so for ticks in a dollar, every dollar that it moves, we make $50 profit, which means that if they're four cents in a dollar, $50 profit, 50 divided by four is $12 and 50 cents per tick. And let me, let me kind of show you guys here on, uh, on a, on an actual chart so you guys can get a little visualization. You can see these vertical lines here going across the chart here to the right, okay? And on the right hand side, you guys can see the actual dollar amount. You can see 2070, 2069, 2068, 2067, 2066. Each, each of those are dollars. This is the e mini S&P 500. So every single one of those dollars is divided into four, right? So we have something that looks like this. We have the halfway point, something like that. And every single time the market moves a tick or it moves a cent, which is only four cents, the value of that is going to be $12.50, okay? If we make a trade, just uh, an example here, if we make a trade, for example, where we're, let me find a long example for some of you guys. This one here, for example, right? If we go long, I can't see the price there. It's 2063. So if we go long 2063 and we get out here, at 2066, which is a little bit higher where that vertical line is, that horizontal line is, we get out there, that is a trade of one, two, three points. So since every point or every dollar is worth $50 in profit because the market is leveraged, then we make $150. Why? It's three points. 50 times three is 150. And then we, that's the way that we do the breakdown. The NASDAQ, for example, and let me if I, uh, bring back these, uh, these charts for you. The NASDAQ is going to be $0.04 cents per dollar or $20 in profit per dollar and then $5 per tick. So 20 divided by 4, obviously, right? And then you have the Dow and then you have the Russell as well. I first started trading the Russell, uh, you know, to about 14 years or so when I first started trading and they were the reason why most people switched over to the e-mini S&P 500 is because the e-mini Russell was moving to another exchange and we didn't necessarily know how it was going to act on the new exchange and since the e-mini S&P 500 is such a great market to trade everybody just stuck with the e-mini S&P 500. So the following one, these aren't quote unquote e-mini futures but they are going to be futures that you can trade. These are the commodities. The, the crude oil contracts, which most people or a lot of people, I should say, have been trading recently because of the huge, huge volatility that we've seen is $1,000 per dollar and then $10 per tick. Gold, uh, give me one second here, guys. So gold and silver, I'm going to talk about those here in just a moment. Okay, so I'm back, guys. This is this is the little criminal that I'm having to take care of. <laughs> and he literally was causing a little trouble, so I had to pause the video there for a second to, to take care of this little guy. So... So gold and silver, uh, silver is the highest profit futures contract that you can trade. It's $5,000 per every dollar that it goes up. And there's 0 0.005 cents per dollar, $25 there per cents. So I'm going I'm to show you here the, the futures and the silver market as well. This over here, I've been trading this quite a bit. This is the, the weekly chart for silver. And you can see the dollars there on the right. You can't really see the cents, but that's the way that it is built. And you can see crude here on the left. Crude finally saw a little bit of a dip. We're, we're expecting it to continue going down. I'm, I'm recording this in June of 2016. So probably in late June 2016, August 2016, excuse me, June, July, is when we're expecting the market to get back down here. You can see the circles that I have drawn here. And then after that, we won't have oil that low for, for quite some time. So if I go to oil, excuse me, gold, you can see gold here as well. The dollar's there on the right. So that, that's essentially how the quote unquote leverage in the futures market works, guys. So, so keep that in mind that for every dollar, we call them points. 
the market goes up, we make a lot more money than when the market doesn't go up. Now, one last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is the, the margins, okay? Most of you guys are used to thinking of margins as the amount of money that you're going to borrow to be able to trade. That's not the way it works in the futures market. The reason why is because when you when you buy a stock, for example, you're buying something tangible, right? You're, you're buying a percent ownership in the company that the broker or anybody who you owe money to can literally go and take away. It's, it's tangible. The futures market, especially when we're trading things like indices, there's nothing tangible. It's like monopoly money or, or we're playing literally, um, you know, monopoly where it's it's just the, the value of the dollar only exists because it's there. It kind of sounds like the U.S. dollar, but uh, to kind of talk to you a little bit more to define this for you, the reason why we don't call it quote unquote borrow money in the futures market is exactly for that reason. That's the main reason why they call us that trade futures speculators because the only thing that we're doing is we are... We are predicting or putting our money with, let's, I don't want to say a bet because it sounds like we're gambling. We don't really gamble, but we're making a, a, a very educated prediction, let's say, of what direction the market is going to go. So we are literally speculating in that the market's going to go up or the market's going to go down. So because there's nothing tangible, the margin for us in the futures market is going to be the amount of money required to be able to trade per contract, in other words, per position. That is, if we want to buy one contract of the E-mini S&P 500, if we want to put in a position, we need a minimum margin of $500. Now, there's going to be an intraday margin rate and there's going to be an overnight margin rate. And the reason why they're different is because obviously the risk level is a lot higher when you're holding a position overnight. For the E-mini S&P 500, you're looking at about $500 per uh, order in the E-mini S&P 500. So usually the minimum to open up accounts for the E-mini S&P 500 is going to be $1,000. And then whenever you put in a position, that $500 is reserved until you get out of that position. And then obviously, whenever you you know win money or lose money, it, it automatically appears in your account. Whereas the overnight rate is going to be in the thousands. You know, if I if I remember correctly, crude is 3,400. The E-mini S&P 500, if I'm not mistaken, is 51 or 5,200. So intraday means that you're you're opening, you're putting a position the same day. You're not you're not closing it overnight. And remember that overnight means when the market closes, not after 12 a.m. So to speak. Okay. Overnight means that you're holding from one day to the other. Let's say you're holding three days, for example. So if you're going to put in a position and, and expect, for example, if I show you the market, we were able to talk uh, pretty good. We were able to, to, to predict a few of these dips that we saw in the market. You can see the current move down that we're getting. If you're going to go short here, okay, and we're going to expect the market to get down to here, all right? So if we're, we're, we're going to make our, our educated prediction. That I don't want to say bet, but we're going to make our educated prediction that the market's going to go down, right? We need a minimum of the $5,000 or whatever the overnight margin is for your broker to be able to hold the position until it gets down here, which will be a few months from now, most likely. Right, maybe six months or so. So that's that's te that's how it works in terms of the the futures market, guys. That's that's basically the terminology of how we call dollars and cents, points and ticks. You know, the the graphs that you can see on here are tick charts. I'm going to talk a little bit about that in the next videos when we talk about specific strategies. So um, if you have any questions, let me know. You know, you can leave a comment here on YouTube or on the site. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, guys. The next video is going to be on trading platforms. There's a handful of them out there. I'm going to recommend one for you guys to use, especially because it's a lot simpler to be able to use. So let me know if you guys have any questions. Again, don't forget to subscribe to YouTube, and we will talk to you soon, guys. Ciao.